Uh, hi everyone, my name is Yuhang Zhao. I'm from Cornell Tech, and today I'm going to present our work, which is Stairlight, where we design different AR visualizations to help people with low vision uh, walk on stairs more safely and effectively. So a little bit background about low vision. So low vision is a visual impairment that cannot be corrected by normal eyeglasses or contact lenses. But different from people who are blind, they still have a lot of functional vision to use. So as you can see in the image, uh, on the left top corner is the typical vision we usually have and or we can see through our eyeglasses. But for people with low vision, they may have a blurry vision which cannot be corrected by the eyeglasses, or they may lose their central vision, or they may have blind spots inside of their vision. And these are just some examples. Actually, there are a lot of different visual conditions low vision people may have. And one person can also have many different visual low vision conditions at the same time. So it is a very complicated situation, which also brought a lot of difficulties to their daily life. And one representative task, which is one of the most dangerous mobility challenges that low vision people face, is their navigation. So this is the video showing a low vision person navigate on a stairs. So he walked very slowly. And you can see he actually holds a white can in his hands, but he didn't use it in this indoor stair navigation task. So this is very interesting to us. And why is that? So we conducted a user study. This is our prior work. So we observed the 14 uh, people with low vision and tried to understand their experiences, challenges, and needs in their daily stair navigation task. And we find that it turned out the white can is not a widely used tool for people who have low vision. So the reason is because they still have residual vision to use. So a lot of them still rely on their vision to perceive the surrounding environment so they don't need a white cane. And also the information that can be provided by a white cane is very limited. So people just use the cane to get a pinhole of information within a very limited distance, which is way more limited as opposed to the broader channel you can get from the uh, visual channel. And of course, there is social acceptance problem. Like uh, this can be can expose their uh, disability related vulnerability, and many people don't want to use a white can to show people that, especially in indoor navigation. So there actually is a big gap between the needs by people with low vision and the current technology. And we try to understand their behaviors to design some technology to inspire our design. And we find that first, low vision people, they extensively use their vision in the daily stair navigation task. And also, so for example, the most uh, like important thing they try to look at is the contrast strips on the stairs. So this is one example. Those are the visual contrast that people put on the stair edges so it can attract people's attention more. But unfortunately, in many cases, the contrast straps in daily life is not accessible. And many stairs, it doesn't have contrast step, uh, straps at all, which brought a lot of difficulties to people with low vision. And also, based on our study, we find that as opposed to the general stairs, the first and last stairs is way more important and also challenging for people with low vision. That's the part that they paid most attention to. So. Our study emphasizes the challenges that people with low vision face, but also in, like, emphasizes the needs of the, such a technology that should help people with low vision with their navigation. That's why uh, this motivated our research. So we try to leverage the residual vision that people with low vision have and design different technologies especially based on different AR platforms to enhance their vision directly so that they can better perceive the stairs and navigate on those stairs. So our design focused on both the projection-based AR platforms and also the smart glasses platforms. But for the sixth time today, I'm only going to talk about one of it, which is projection-based AR. 
So before I talk about my system, I want to say that the design of those visual augmentations is a major contribution of our work, but it is not easy at all. So on one hand, we need to make our design easily perceivable by people with low vision based on their visual ability. For example, something that is very easy to perceive by sighted people is not easy to see uh, to be seen by people who have low vision. For example, a small error it can be very small and low contrast. And also, on the other hand, we want to control the distraction of our design so that people can still have the ability to pay attention to the real world. So for example, if people lose their peripheral vision, their visual field is very limited. And if I add a virtual star right inside in front of their central vision, of course, it's visible enough, people can definitely see it. But it also blocks their vision, which will be too overwhelming for them. So that's why when we try to design different visual augmentations, we always need to think about how we should balance the visibility and distraction for people with low vision to optimize their visual experience. So keep that in mind. We design Starlight based on the projection-based AR platform, which can project the information directly to the physical environment so that we can enhance the stairs for people with low vision directly. So as you can see on the left side of the image, so with the projection-based uh, platform, we can use the depth sensor to recognize the position of each stair edges and project back different visual highlights to enhance the visibility of the stairs so that the low vision user can better perceive those stairs. So this is a video showing how our system works. So it simulates the interaction of a flashlight. So if people point the system towards the stairs and it recognizes the closest three steps of stairs and the project highlights onto them. And the system also updates itself based on the user's position so that it's kind of leading the participants to, towards, towards the front. So from this video, you may also notice that we actually, like the user actually used many different colors of highlights and many different patterns. So why is that? So this, is de this design actually was motivated by our prior study, and we find the first and last stairs are way more important than the rest of the stairs. That's why we try to design different patterns to distinguish those first and last stairs to make sure people really pay attention to them and can easily catch them with their vi visual ability. So our initial design is to use the yellow highlights because the yellow color is very bright, can attract people's attention. And then we generate those thick highlights for the first and last stairs. But for the middle of the stairs, we generate relatively thinner uh, visual highlights. And we also want to further emphasize the first and last stairs to make sure people can notice the existence of the stairs and its exact position so that at a distance so that they can better prepare their step. That's why we designed some different animation patterns for the first and last stairs. So I'm going to give two examples. One is this flashing edge. So there are two features with this. One is it generates this uh, flash effect by switching the thickness of the uh, visual highlights. So flash, because flash can attract people's attention, especially for the peripheral vision. And also, we always keep a stable thinner edge at the exact position of the stair edge, so the user can easily keep track of the position of the stair. And another example is this moving vertical zebra. So we designed this zebra pattern because it reminds people the straight crossing lines, which means alert to them. And also, we switch its position between left and right, so it generates the effect of movement to attract the user's attention. So these are two examples we designed for the first and last stairs to attract users' attention. And on the other hand, we want to control the distraction at the same time. That's why we want to minimize the obtrusiveness of the highlights on the rest of the stairs because they are relatively less important. So we give different color options, for example, the dull yellow color or the relatively darker blue color so that the user can see the visual highlights, but still they won't be that distracting for them so that they can still pay more attention to the physical environment. 
And with all of these different options, the user can select whichever patterns or colors they prefer and use them on different type of stairs. They can also customize it based on the different stairs, like based on their different colors. So that's the design of our system. And now I want to talk about how we evaluate it. So we conducted a user study with 12 low vision participants and six female and six male. And they have a variety of different low vision conditions because we want to understand how different visual conditions will affect the people's experience with our system. So our study was conducted at indoor stairs for now. And first, we show the participants all different designs we have and ask them which uh, they prefer so that later they can use their preferred combination to conduct the stair navigation task. And we record the time and also compare the user's performance with their typical walking method. For example, if they prefer to wear their glasses or they prefer to use their uh, white cane. So for our prototype, we did build a prototype by combining a Kinect and a Pico projector. But to control the uh, effect of the computer vision uh, technology, so we tried, so in our study with the real users, we use a wizard of Oz method by uh, setting up the environment with stationary projectors. And we have one researcher who controlled the visual highlights manually based on the user's uh, position on the stairs. So here are some results. So first, we find that our stair light can improve participants' walking time on the stairs for both upstairs and downstairs. So this is a bar graph. Uh, the orange bar shows the average time uh, used by people with low vision uh, when they use their lights, uh, light. And also the blue bar means the time, the mean time they use the one they use their typical walking method. So this demonstrated the effectiveness of our system. And at the meantime, we believe that safety is one of the most important factors uh, we want to evaluate, especially for the navigation task. So we ask the participants about their psychological security and asking them to give scores ranges from one to seven, and seven is the best. And participants actually give very high scores, and all the scores they get gave is about the, the mean scores, and they ha we have an average score of 6.6, .6, which is really high. So participants also mentioned that with the projection techniques, they can uh, spend much less visual effort on the stair navigation so that they feel more confident and safe. So because of the improvement of people's psychological security, their behaviors on the stairs changed a lot. For example, all of the participants stopped using their feet to feel the position of the stair edges. And also some of them stopped hold, holding to the railings. And also some participants changed their looking direction. For example, originally they looked down to their feet to see each of the steps, but now they look more ahead. So here's a code describing how the users change their uh, looking direction. So as P9 mentioned, I know mentally I'm looking in the bottom field of vision, which is their lower peripheral vision, even though I'm looking straight ahead. The highlight stands out very bright and my peripheral catches it. Without the system, I have to stare a lot more at the stairs and I have to look a little extra to make sure that this is really the last step. So this actually emphasizes that our system can save a lot of visual effort for the users and make them feel more comfortable. And of course, social acceptance. This is very important when we talk about assistive technologies. So most participants felt that our system is acceptable and also very cool, and people think it definitely can be extended to be used by sighted people, for example, in a dark environment, just like a flashlight. But two of our participants, they were concerned that the lights from the projection uh, technique, they might scare others and draw too much attention to their disability. So we do agree that this projection-based technique it can uh, raise some uh, privacy and also social acceptance problem. That's why to address this problem, our next, um, another part of our research is to design visualizations based on smart glasses to protect the people's privacy. So if you're interested in this part of work, please feel free to look at our paper. 
So bef before the end of my talk, I want to do a little discussion and reflection on our work. So first, as I said, safety is one of the most important factors that when people design navigation technologies. But I always ask myself, so is the user really safe even though they themselves, they feel safe and confident? So I feel the answer is absolutely not because the computer definitely make mistakes. And if they don't, they trust the computer vision technology too much, they will like encounter a lot of dangerous situations. So that's why, on one hand, we want people to trust our system so that they can use the system more and take more benefit from it. But on the other hand, for the, these special tasks, especially like steering navigation, which can cause some very severe consequences, I think it might be also important to think about how to encourage people to doubt the um, computer uh, technology and maybe use their own skills to judge the correctness of the system. So that's one direction I think we want to look into in the future. And of course, our current study conducted was conducted in a very ideal situation, which is indoor uh, steer navigation. But there can, the real world can be very complicated. So it can be outdoor scenarios. There can be multiple users. If many people use this projection technique, there can be potentially have conflict. So the so definitely long term evaluation in the wild evaluation should be considered in the future. And also, this work is actually one example that emphasizes the, the great potential of AR technology for people with low vision. Because by designing suitable visual augmentations, we can directly enhance their visual abilities and provide them, them equal access to different types of information. Just like uh, eyeglasses today for people who are nearsighted, because like several, uh, many, many years ago, when you know, there is no eyeglasses, nearsighted is also a disability. That's why we really believe that smart glasses and in general AR platforms has the potential to help people with low vision and enhance their daily experiences. And that's actually the major focus of my PhD thesis. And I'm actually on the job market, so if you're interested in my work, please feel free to come talk to me. And thank you so much. Um, did you investigate at all uh, non-traditional stairs with curvatures or maybe a spiral staircase, anything of that nature? Uh, we definitely, when we design our system, we definitely kept that in mind. So I don't think the design of those video highlights have conflicts with those type of stairs. So the only challenge would be like how we can use computer vision technology to recognize different types of stairs. stairs. I think that's the major difference uh, for the, our different types of stairs, different type of stairs for our system. But I do think the design itself won't be affected. One more. Mm -hmm. um, did you consider augmenting the visual feedback with any other sort of feedback, like uh, haptic or auditory feedback? Yeah, that's a really good point. So we definitely do, and we think it's very important to provide multi-model uh, feedback. So if you look at our paper for the design of the, the visual augmentations for smart glasses, we do involve different uh, audio feedback to enhance people's visual experience, which actually works really well. People do prefer, you know, to see things at, and at the meantime to hear some augmentation. So because it can compensate and enhance each other. So yeah, that's very important. Hi, uh, hi, Yuhang. So I have a question. Like, uh, as you discussed, uh, that um, some some participants would concern whether the projected light will scare the sighted people around. So, mm -hmm. did you would you consider that uh, uh, if you can use the projected light to um, notify the the people around who is sighted, or to how to uh, uh, let the 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 um, the, the user to, to interact with the sighted people around by projecting some information or some notification? Oh, you mean, for Actively. example, use this technology as a identity tool? Yeah, uh, like, um, maybe, yeah, maybe to 
get some some help, maybe for re- reaching for some help or to mm-hmm. notify the the people around about. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it definitely has this potential. Like people with low vision, as I mentioned, many of them don't use a walking white cane, right? But many of them, they actually have identity cane that they don't use it to navigate, but they hold them in their hand. So what you are talking about, like, can be a similar like situation, right? If they project some information out, if people knows their difficulties, and then they'd love to help, and they won't, you know, walk bump bump into them. Yeah, that would be definitely a potential application. Uh, thank you for the talk. I was wondering what activates the system? So if the person's moving through the environment and how do they start using your program? Mm-hmm. So our system is currently focusing on the visual design part, so we didn't build a fully functional uh, system. But I do imagine it can be like, Ideally, like the handheld device is not a good platform because you don't want people to hold things in their hand when they walk on stairs, right? But that's the, the current platform we are building. But ideally, I think it can be some variable devices, like you wear like a necklace in front of their uh, chest, for example. So in that case, it can definitely, the system can uh, activate themselves, right? If they detect the stairs in the environment, it can project lights out automatically. Yeah, that would be the ideal prototype. All right, let's thank our 